Welcome to Opinion Havers, a movie podcast for A1, day one fans. I'm Cody. I'm Tyler. Tyler, what? what did we watch? We watched Spongebob movie, right? We watched Spongebob, what's it called? The Spongebob, the SpongeBob movie. The Spongebob movie, Sponge on the Run, parentheses 2020, for any of you who are confused. Even though it was released in 2021. Yeah, I don't know. Hey, I don't make the rules of IMDb. I just, I just read the data. Here's what gets me heated about it every time. Hmm. It is all it <clears throat> before it released had four point eight million dollars in the box office. How does it make almost five million dollars before it's released? Think hard. Screeners, like not screeners, but you know, like test screenings. Maybe. People yes. pay for those, right? <laughs> I don't know. Early screen, you know? We've never been invited to them. Okay, when did Steven Hillenburg die? Maybe they screened it for him and did a party. I don't know. What about, who, what about those people who buy the movie early? They have like that thing that costs thousands of dollars where you can own uh, movies yeah. in your house. Yeah. Did where you're some basically... sort of early thing there? Yeah. I don't know. When are we going to do that? At... <laughs> That 50, I... thousand subscribers. I think that's when we can probably afford it. <laughs> we, yeah. we have some ridiculous ad revenue coming in. I would do it. We got when we have fifty thousand patrons. Yeah, all given ten dollars. Yeah, yeah. That's so, a good goal. Tyler, let me. This is a SpongeBob movie. Yeah. Right? This is the third SpongeBob movie. Yes. Look, people want to know what are your SpongeBob roots? Are you a a one day one fan? Yeah. I've been there the whole time. Since way back in 99, Cody. I was there. You were there. I was there. We all remember it. I was there in the 90s. We loved it. I remember the pilot. You yeah, remember you the pilot? Yeah. I remember that. The pilot wasn't actually that good, but it was good enough. It was good. I, uh, I had SpongeBob t-shirts. I had multiple SpongeBob t-shirts. Do I you- was that level. That's where I was at. I have a giant stuffed SpongeBob. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I had a, st- a small stuffed SpongeBob at one point. It was probably from John's Incredible Pizza. Yeah. Which is like a smaller chain of Chuck E. Cheese pizza. You know that vibe? Yeah. We've dis- discussed it before because I've never heard of it, but I do have a token to it. You have a John's Incredible Pizza? Yeah. The thing about John's Incredible Pizza, they have bumper cars, which is very cool. We just crack into us. Yeah. Tall boy. Yes. <laughs> they have bumper cars and they have peanut butter pepperoni pizza, which is gross, but also fun. So that's the demographic. So do you want to be the one to give us a <clears throat> synopsis? Oh, I'll synopsitize it real good. If, are, are you ready? Can, do I start now? Uh,. Yeah, that would have been a good time to start. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's, it's SpongeBob, and uh, uh, there's SpongeBob. He's doing his SpongeBob stuff. I'm just, yeah. you know, and then uh, somebody goes missing. You gotta go find him. And then there's another rendition of one of the King Poseidon. Yes. And he's doing stuff, you know? Very well and- put. <laughs> Stop. That may be the worst synopsis. It's the most drunk you've sounded <laughs> giving a synopsis. <laughs> well, it's like, at what level is it a spoiler, you know? Because they go to Atlantic City. Yeah. I, I, uh, find Gary. Okay. Here's the thing. The original series was a King Neptune. The it was first King Neptune. Movie, yeah, the first movie is King well, Neptune. Well, no, because he has a cook-off with King Neptune in the series. And I think it's well, Neptune, ne- but then the movie there's Neptune, or is it a different, similar king of the sea? Well, you know, so that's Poseidon. That's that, Poseidon. Then that's, King Neptune is the first movie, and now this movie it's Poseidon again. But yeah, it's a different. It's a different reimagining. Yeah, it's your favorite British actor, Matt Berry. Can we just you know, hats off to Matt Berry. Pour a little out. He's not dead, but. You know, he will die one day. One day. What a delight. I've heard he's in the new... What We Do in the Shadows? Yeah, which I still need to watch. It's... I've started watching it. I've heard it's great. I've heard it's very good. It's so good. It is very good. He's in it. 
there is I'm not going to spoil it, but there is an episode in the first season where the original three vampires from the movie are in it. No. Yeah. Oh, I have They're to watch all it. All there. Now. I love that movie. Love my Barry. Shout out IT Crowd. Shout out. What's that really weird series? Garth Marenghi's weird uh, place. Dark place. Dark Place. Yeah. Garth Marenghi's Dark Place. Oh, so six episodes on YouTube. Best best eighty minutes you'll ever spend. Yeah, okay. <laughs> diving into that hole. Oh yeah, it's sl- oh it's so this, good. But this is my very second appearance in a SpongeBob movie. I heard. Oh, I saw this. I saw yeah. this. Because he's the dolphin in the previous one. Here's the thing. I'm an A one day one SpongeBob fan. But I've only seen, you know, I grew up on the Spongebob movie. I grew up on the first three or four seasons. But I haven't seen much past that. So I haven't seen the second movie. And I haven't seen a lot of the new series. Yeah. There's a real low point. I think it's better now. But there's a real low point a couple years ago. Mm. Where they went, like, real gumball. You know, like that kind of humor with it. Anyway, but now it's better. The second movie feels just like a two-hour episode, to the point where I was tr- Tiffany and I spent days trying to find the episode where they do something, and then we realized it's in the second movie. Really? Yeah. So there's not like a linear. It's not like a two-hour movie structure story, or no? Movie? It's so it's the full. T- you know, it's all the same thing, but it feels like it's an. Ep- you know, like as far as the humor yeah. and how well it's all paced and how quick it feels, it yeah. feels like you just watch an episode. Okay. It doesn't feel like you watched a two-hour movie. It goes so, quick. So let me ask you about this one. Yeah. This third, the third movie, tell me your your first impressions. I I liked it. I am glad I watched the uh, Camp Coral show for an episode before watching the movie, or else the animation style would have been jarring. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. I, I was so-so on the movie. There were a few moments that I loved few high points as a whole i remember enjoying the first spongebob movie a lot more yeah i feel like it was a little more consistent and just more consistent with like what i know spongebob to be um but i there were good things about it i had some good laughs there were some fun cameos and i actually really liked the animation style Mm -hmm. Um, i thought it was it was good it's hard to do the 3d that looks a little 2d still but isn't super hyper realistic and they did a good job still making it 3d but cartoony and unique, you know? Yeah. It still felt like Spongebob to me. I yeah. liked it. So you did like it? Well, it was okay. <laughs> it was okay. I don't know. Yeah. How do you, I mean, have you seen the first movie at any point recently? I haven't seen it for a long yeah. time. That's why I was... Because we... Tiffany and I have gone back and watched the first and second movie fairly recently. And I think of all three of them, the second one is my favorite. Do you think this, the, this one's better or worse than the, fir- the original, the first movie? I think this one's better than the first one, but it's kind of like how Age of Ultron is a more impressive film than the first Avengers movie. Mm-hmm. But the first one was such an event that people look at it a lot more fondly. Yeah. You remember Because I think I fondly. remember, didn't they stop making SpongeBob for like a year or so to do the movie? I think I, th- I, think I remember mm-hmm. that as a child, like reading it, like, oh, they're pausing the series. There's no new episodes coming out for a while because they're doing the yeah. movie. And so when the movie came out, it was exciting. Here's the thing with SpongeBob. All right, I got, I got a bone to pick. All right, with SpongeBob peeps. All right, the fans or the the makers. The makers. Okay, there is zero consistency with when SpongeBob comes out. It seems mm-hmm. like it's like, hey everybody, on this random Wednesday, new episodes of SpongeBob. Everybody, mm-hmm. and then they'll they'll let you know on Nickelodeon four months in advance. And then you get one new episode every four months. Mm. I know Steven Universe fans are in that same thing. They do like a Steven Universe drop where it's like they haven't done anything in a year. And now there's like 10 new episodes in two weeks or something, you know? Yeah. Well, so ask yourself, how many seasons of SpongeBob are there? More, Keep... than, more than three, certainly. Yeah. So it started in 1999. So you'd think. 21 seasons they're on season 12 or 13 depending on where you look oh i don't know what to say about that yeah so it's very inconsistent all right okay before we really dive in i just want to do one quick exercise what is your favorite episode of spongebob Ooh. 
Do you have yours ready? I have mine. I know mine. Go, because I got I got to think because I've been struggling with this recently. Think okay, think about it. Mine, and I think maybe part of the reason my favorite is it's so scarce. I feel like it didn't come on very often. It's kind of like a hidden episode. But then I got a DVD that had it on there, and I watched it all the time. Shanghai. It's the one where they go and they have to work on the yes. Flying Dutchman's ship. And on the DVD, because at the end, they give their final wish. And it is Eeny, Meeny, Miny, Moe, so he gives it. Yeah. It's Spongebob, Patrick, and Squidward. And on the DVD, you can see all three of the endings for which one they pick. So super fun. I loved mm-hmm. it. Yeah. So you see what Squidward wished for, what Spongebob wished for, what Patrick wished for. So I didn't know you got all that on the DVD. I've only ever seen Spongebob's wish, which yeah. is what aired. Mm-hmm. I uh, I think Squidward's is Squidward the one. I think he wishes to get them out of there or something, and then it's them and they're out of there, and it looks like they're at SpongeBob's house, like we did it. But then they're actually, it's their heads on fruit and the that's Flying SpongeBob's Dutchman's wish. Oh, that's SpongeBob's. Okay, because he wishes the Flying was. Dutchman was a vegetarian. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they're vegetables. Yeah, the fruit presents scurvy. Yeah. Okay, so no. that's my. That's probably mine. I would say. So that's all, that's the one I normally say. But so since you said that one, I'll go with uh, the other one, uh-huh. which is uh, well, it's my, the title of it is gone from it's my okay. brain. We don't need, I just happen no. to know that title because I've seen it so many times. No, but I know this one. It's all right. Was it Survival of the Idiots? Oh, is that the one in Sandy's? Yeah, Lady Winter in Sandy's uh, when she's hibernating. Yeah, which oh. I, when it first aired, I hated that episode so much. Really, I just didn't like it. I didn't think it was funny. And now as an adult, it's hysterical. Oh, Love that it. has like classic SpongeBob, the Dirty Dan. Yeah, I'm dirty. Oh, so good. Who and then whenever be? I'm, if I'm ever watching like Chiefs football, because yeah. Dan Sorensen is Dirty Dan always takes me back to that episode of Spongebob. I'm like, oh, he's Dirty Dan. <laughs> dirty Dan. I'm Dirty Dan. Oh, so good. All right. Thanks for sharing. That's a, that's a great episode. Good yeah. pick. But Shanghai is normally what I say because of the perfume department. Oh, I lo- I remember reenacting that with a friend of mine yeah. <laughs> like on sleepovers. <laughs> just being like, oh, that's so good. <laughs> Stupid gas mask and they pull, oh, they so pull it back. Yeah. Oh, love it. All right. Yeah. Should we do it? Should we yeah. dive in? We should. We'll, we'll get we'll get in this the the paddy mobile the oh. not the paddy wagon or the upgrade they never say a name for it it's the paddy wagon from the first one but they make they it upgrade look cool. it they make it like a long one like the Burger King chicken sandwich but it's a Krabby Patty yeah you know that yeah let's do it okay spoiler spoiler bottom we're here yeah spoilers Plankton was the bad guy <gasps> but he's also a good guy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so right off the bat, I was offended. Okay. Because they start, and they're like, you're in the ocean, blah, blah, blah. And there's a narrator who's just some dude. Just some dude? And he's narrating. Um, and then they're beginning, but I was like, what happened to the French guy? But then in the middle of the movie, I think the French guy was narrating. It was like a British guy in the beginning. What was that about? So it's Tim Hill doing the, the yeah. He's the documentary filmmaker guy. Documentary narrator. Oh. I just remember the French guy. The French guy does come up later. But, does but question, was, who does the voice sense. of the French guy, you're asking yourself? Yeah. Tell me. Is it Tom Kenny? Yeah. It's probably Tom Kenny. Yes, yeah, Tom Kenny. Yeah. Tom Kenny does uh Tom Kenny does Frenchie. So anyway, I was just offended they didn't include Frenchie. We get into beginning bottom, new art style. I really like the art style. I thought it was good. With one exception, <gasps> no, they almost got Sandy's fur right. Like it was all, it was like unsettling. It was in the uncanny valley. I think the rest of it all worked. I think the hair on the fur, Sandy's fur, I think it looked wrong and didn't match the fun aesthetic of everything else. Yeah, because everything else is all smooth, so it is kind of weird. She's really she's... brittle. It looks like it looks like she's from like a Wes Anderson s- stop motion movie. And everyone else is from the Spongebob movie. You know? Yeah. 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 Um, <clears throat> so he goes through everyone in Bikini Bottom. A few characters. Then we see Spongebob Patrick getting up. That's fun. I, uh, I love Patrick. I think this movie, for me, Patrick's like, Good morning, Spongebob. And Spongebob's like, Good morning, Patrick. And they go... I could have just had that in the movie. <laughs> Every time Patrick said it, 
It's funny too because SpongeBob was like doing different things. Patrick just kept saying it, and every time Patrick said it, I just laughed again. I was like, this could have been a 90 minute movie for me. Yeah. For me. I don't know about you. For me, it was all I needed. <laughs> <laughs> just have them get their mouths get slightly bigger each time they say it. <laughs> oh, man. So, well, I mean, that's that started me off right. I was into it. That's all I needed, really. Yeah. Um, SpongeBob wakes up. And Gary's on his face, and he's like, ah, oh, snail trail. He's got stuff on him. What'd you make of that? I went, oh. <laughs> See, that's what Bailey did. <laughs> went right over my head, much like that joke would have if I was seven, year olds, what, seven years old watching it. Yeah. Do you get it now that you've thought back on it? or? I mean, as soon as she was like, oh, I was like, yeah, I get it. I just don't know how much substance I had behind it. There's no, there's no malintent there. It's a kid's show. <laughs> no. Well, that's the thing is that I think it being SpongeBob, the intent was for it to be... Here's one for the adults. Here's a yeah. double entendre for the, yeah, for the it's, adults. It's watching. meant to be seen both ways, you know? Yeah. I hear that. I hear that. SpongeBob, of all shows, does that the most masterfully. They do. I defy you to find a show that does that. I better. remember in college whipping out like an old SpongeBob DVD, watching a few episodes, and I was like... I did not get literally half of these jokes. And now, like, there were so many jokes in there that I got as a college student that I didn't get as a kid. Yeah. But I still enjoyed it just as much. Which is, it's not an easy thing to do, but it is much it's, appreciated. It's, it's masterful. It's like a completely different show when you're older. Love that. Yeah. So, Weezer, did Weezer, was Weezer the one doing the song in the beginning? Maybe. Who knows? Here's Weezer thing does things. about you know? Weezer? I don't know what it is. They're a 90s band that has been around since the 90s and through to today. And somehow, over the last two or three years, they have done like five 80s ballad covers for movies. And it yeah. doesn't... They're not an 80s band. How is this happening? They did it for Frozen. They did it for this movie. That's too many movies. They're not an 80s band. What's, Here, what is that? Here's the thing. I think Weezer, they have... They're, you know, they've realized uh, they can just... Do this and make a lot of money. Mm. Okay. This it's Always Sunny in Com- Bikini Bottom, which was written by Rivers Cuomo and Bjorn Yitling. I don't think Bjorn is in Weezer, but I know Rivers Cuomo is performed by Weezer. I don't know. I don't know. I just didn't understand. Why Weezer? Everybody loves Weezer. Also, didn't Weezer do the song at the end as well? I'm trying to find it on the soundtrack. Uh, probably. The Flaming Lips did a, a song. We love the Flaming Lips. Okay. You, you tell me about something about this movie. Go yep, ahead. Weezer did a cover of Take On Me at the end of the movie, so... Yeah. Another 80s song. They did a cover of it. Another Weezer... What is that? I don't know. Why would you do They don't sound bad. I just... It's like, what... How'd they become the go-to 80s band for family films Can they just do covers? I get... Are they good at doing covers and sounding like the original band? So if you want a super high quality recording of a song from the 80s, Weezer's your go-to because they're alive and currently playing music. Look, you tell me, the cover of Take On Me, how was it? It sounded like Take On, it sounded like Take On Me. I don't know. Like a cover it was good on, enough. Like It's yeah. not bad. But like in Frozen 2, they do a cover of Lost in the Woods, which is like an 80s ballad. And it is worse than the original. You know, like, okay, let's talk about Frozen 2 for a minute. Okay. A little diversion. Don't remember if we recorded on Frozen 2. Probably not. But I did watch it. All right. Yeah. Here's my problem with Frozen 2. They got Lost in the Woods, 80s power ballad sung by, I forget the guy. He's in Mindhunter. He's in Hamilton. He's white. We love him. Okay. Yeah. Plays Kristoff. Kristoff. Okay. Great and song. Sven. Fun part of the movie. And Loved it. No, no, he does Sven and all 70 of the backup singers. Yes, very, very good. Then we got Adina Menzel sings Adele Into Menzel. the Unknown. Yes. What'd you say? Ad- Adele Menzel. Adele Menzel. Ad- You're going to get me all mixed up. <laughs> Adina Menzel, yeah. she sings Into the Unknown. She right. does a good job because she's Adina Menzel. Not my favorite, but she's obviously good at what she does. Now, in the end credits, they're like, we're going to mix it up Disney style. We're going to have contemporary artists cover the song, just like they did for Lion King, you know, just like they did for Aladdin, where they have like the soulful duet version of, you know, sung by different people in the end credits. Who are you going to pick? 
Who are you going to pick to to match the energy of Adina Menzel? Who is a band that can do this with great vocals and can give it punch? Weezer. The answer? Oh, thank goodness no. Panic at the Disco. Brandon Yeri singing it. I think his version's even better. Great. Wonderful. They're like, you know, we're going to follow up a little one-two punch, follow that up. Weezer. (laughs) And then Weezer does the 80s one. And it's like just twenty percent worse than the original. Yeah, you. Whereas were... Brandon Yuri is like at least like, oh, it's a female singer. Now he's a male singer, and he's doing a little different. He does a great. She does a good, you know. And then they're like, oh, we all love the guy who plays Kristoff. He's a great singer. He did a great job. And look, Weezer's here, and they're going to give you a B minus cover of it. Like I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I mean, it was disappointing. We were all disappointed at the credits of Frozen Two because because <laughs> of that. We cover. did do an episode of Frozen Two, didn't yeah. we? Yeah, because you explained, you gave me the analogy of water running down a, you, you, the fjord. <laughs> They're in the fjord, fjord. and the <laughs> dam breaks, and I was trying to figure out why that was a problem. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, just a reminder to be mad at the producers of Frozen 2 for picking Weezer. Here's another thing to be mad at them about. I think it's just because the parents of kids these days are usually Weezer. Like, the white parents of yes. kids these days are probably Weezer fans. That's true. It's a cop out. Here's the thing. But then, why Panic at the Disco? That's a whole decade later. Because because right. you're a fan of Panic at the Disco. So, <laughs> here's the what, real just problem. I'm a white man. The real travesty with Frozen Two, the best <laughs> short film that they made about Frozen hmm. universe. Yeah. They re- had it on Disney Plus. They have removed it from Disney Plus, oh. and it now costs like twenty five dollars. For a six-minute short. Disney Plus, why is not every single Disney and Pixar short ever made not on your streaming service? Yeah. They That's also removed Cinderella, me. which is outraged Tiffany. I thought the whole point was that we were going to have all the Disney content one place. That was the point. everything. Now they're switching it up. They don't now even they... have enough content. They have enough content to fill it now. How are they pulling stuff from it? Because it's Disney. And you'll pay that $25 like Tiffany has almost done, and I've had to dive on that remote to keep her from doing it i'm like no we're gonna steal it off of youtube like good americans adults wow well so there's weezer um i was a little upset and offended that they reuse squidward's classic line you know the line think about it squidward walks into work what does he say Another day, another migraine yeah which is what he says and then when he gets his on-time percentage in that one episode. So, I just don't understand. Because in the original, he's like, but I just didn't like that they recycled the line. I guess, I don't know. It seems like they're trying to reboot SpongeBob for the next generation, which is why they have that Bikini Bottom show, like about yeah. them at summer camp. Yeah. I just like, and in the original, he's like, another day, another migraine. <laughs> migraine. You know, he like laughs at himself because he thinks he's funny. Yeah. And this one, he's just like, another day, another mig- migraine. You're like, well... It's yeah, plus fun. Which part of the funniness of the last one is he's like, another my, and then it pauses. It's like, Squidward, on time percentage, 12% <laughs> grain. Yeah. <laughs> you uh. know? So it like pauses halfway through his sentence. So, yeah. Anyway, the French guy pops up. So, at that point, a little later. So then that was better, I guess. Um, I don't know. Is there a Netflix version of this movie? There can't be. I was just looking at alternate versions. Hold up. You Stop. Say something you're outraged about. I'm pulling up Netflix right now. Gary is in this movie. We love Gary. It's true. But the beginning of the movie is just him with fangs chomping on things. And I thought, I just thought there were too many fangs on Gary. I feel like it's a bit you use once, but Gary's supposed to be mild and tender and sweet. Yeah. So why does he, he had, I feel like his fangs were out all the time in this movie. And I didn't like, I need a sweet, subtle Gary. Right? I didn't notice his fangs as much, but I, I believe you. It's just in the beginning. And then, like, by the end, you're seeing more of that side of him. The sweet kitty cat snail Gary, right? Yeah. He's yeah, a sweet boy. I was mad about that. Okay. I can confirm there is no SpongeBob on Netflix. So, there's one dude on IMDb. You're fired. He's a liar. So, <laughs> I love Matt Barry. That was just one of my notes. This is a British guy from IT crowd. Matt Barry, he's a delight. Now, we're we're just, you know, we're really stepping around the elephant in the room here. Tell me. Which I feel like is the, you know, most insane sequence. Which every Spongebob movie has that fun, insane sequence where they're like, Alright, here's an episode of Spongebob. 
And here's the center section that lets us lengthen out a SpongeBob special into two and a half hours. Oh. And that's the dream sequence. Oh, I'm getting... I'm almost there. Okay. I'm almost there. Almost right, I there. I got two nuts and then we'll be there. Okay. Give it to me. Favorite part of this about this movie? You know when you're a kid and you're watching SpongeBob. At some point, this is when you know you're, you're growing up. Yeah. Is whenever you realize how is there a lake in Bikini Bottom? Or how it's are they at lagoon. the beach in Bikini Bottom? Yeah. Right? Because there's the lagoon. And this one, there's a lake at a summer... Anyway, Bailey had that realization last night and it made me very happy when she's like how's there a lake they're under the water i'm like yeah but then did it but then you watch those ocean documentaries and they're like hey look a lake underwater and you're like what and then your brain explodes and then you're like oh that's i guess steven hillenberg was actually a phd holding marine biologist was he yeah all right here's what i'm gonna do he taught marine biology at colleges before he made spongebob Oh, a brine pool, sometimes called an underwater or deep water lake or brine lake, is a volume of brine collection in a sea seafloor depression. Pools are dense bodies of water that have salinity that is three to eight times greater than the surrounding ocean. Steven Hillenberg, you you magnificent man. It runs deep, Cody. Wow. I'm looking at it right now. It's it's so beautiful. It looks like <laughs> a goo lagoon, doesn't it's it? It's amazing. <laughs> Oh, I learned something from this movie. <laughs> oh, oh, man. So good. Okay. There's a flashback. SpongeBob's very sad about Gary being stolen away from him. And yeah. they show how they met at camp. Yeah, they did. Um, I mean, tiny Gary. Oh. Tiny SpongeBob. How does it get any better? Those, this was a high point of the movie for me. Yeah. Teeny, tiny Gary. Slithering up SpongeBob, making friends. Loved it. Yeah, so you did. good. It's so adorable. It's shameless. Just shameless adorableness shoved down my eyes, and I liked it. Yeah. Here's my other problem with this movie it's non canonical. I know they're rebooting SpongeBob for a new series, a new there, generation. There's no canon. I know to for a fact that SpongeBob met Sandy when they were adults. Yeah. And he goes over to her place and he needs water. And he doesn't get the water. And uh, it's a whole episode. It's a classic episode. Classic. I don't need it. We all know it. Yeah. We love it. So now they're going to go in here and be like, anyway, everybody met at camp. Even Mr. Krabs, even Squidward, even Patrick and Sandy and Gary. All the core cast met at camp. Yeah. So I don't know about that. Here's the thing. Who, the who wrote the movie? Who what? wrote the movie? Who's the writer? Who's accredited? I, I saw this, and I'll tell you. Tim Hill. Okay. This is, what, how I've, this is what I've come to realize. Oh, I'm not done. Jonathan huh? Abel, Glenn Berger, Stephen Hellenberg, just based on characters. I don't think he actually wrote it. Yeah. Yeah. So You're doing the story. I need the screenplay. Tim so Hill is Tim the screenplay. Hill. So here's what I've come to realize. There is no storyline cody there's no overarching through lines in spongebob there's no character development don't draw attention to the weird me choking on the words there okay (laughs) here's the thing you gotta pay attention to who wrote the story for that episode and that will tell you what is true in that universe Uh. because they're all super inconsistent Sometimes Mr. Crab can go into Sandy's dome without a helmet. Sometimes he has a helmet. Why does Pearl need a helmet? Because she's a whale. Why does she need a water helmet? <laughs> she's wearing a water helmet in some episodes. Yeah. She's the only one that wouldn't need a helmet. Yeah. Whales breathe air. Air. Which are some episodes where they have bonded over both breathing air. Okay. I hear you. But I take issue... With you telling me, there's no character development, all right? There's conflict, there's resolution, there's stuff that happens sometimes, Yeah. right? SpongeBob is pure. He may be obnoxious at times, but he's a good soul and a good heart, right? Yeah. So that, you know? Yeah. I know what What about saying. the time when Squidward would never eat a Krabby Patty? Then he eats all the Krabby Patties, yeah. you know? 
that has that character growth. But then there's other episodes where they reference him having eaten a Krabby Patty in like the 80s. Uh, okay, this leads. This does lead to my issue with the movie. All right, you've already had too many issues with the I movie. I know, I know. But here's here's okay. You can't be any more. I know what you're saying. You're okay. saying that this movie is better than the original SpongeBob movie, but at the same time, true. I just they have a similar storyline, right? It's SpongeBob and Patrick yeah. going to do a, rescue a thing, right? Yeah. To do a rescue of sorts. Yeah. I know exactly where you're going with this. This movie doesn't have a clay. Let me take you back to the original movie. Ring, yeah. ring. Ring, ring. Goes to the voicemail. King Neptune. Mm-hmm. He's got his, his little poker pointed right at Krabs. What's that on the voicemail? Hey, Mr. Krabs, this is Clay. The guy you sold the crown to. <laughs> Neptune's crown. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just wanted to thank you for selling me the crown. Neptune's crown. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I forgot. Okay. I just... It seemed like this movie was... It was just Spongebob and Patrick being taken to a place, being captured, then other people going to save them. Yeah. And there's no... There was just... I needed a little bit more story or a little bit of growth or a little more reason, you know, because in the original they go and they get in trouble for being goofy goobers at the hard, hard boys bar and they learn to be men and go through the big scary trench and, you know, like they do all that stuff. Whereas this one, it was just kind of like, oh, this automated driver is going to take us where we need to go. We're having a crazy dream. That's yeah. over. We're here. We did a bad job. We didn't listen to the advice. We got captured. Our friends saved it. You know, just like, oh, they didn't do anything to be... Even, like, in the beginning, they're like, what kind of adventure is it going to be? Is it going to be the one where we get in an argument and then we get over it and we learn to share our differences and be better? And like, no, I don't think... You know, they have that, like, fourth wall sort of whatever thing. Yeah. But that doesn't even become a theme. It's just kind of like a throwaway joke. And they're literally in a car that drives itself that just takes them where they go. Yeah. I just don't like that there was never any... SpongeBob didn't, you know, they even talk about the courage and having this, the coin and the thing. And I don't really feel like he ever does summon his courage. There's one, I guess he kind of speaks to King Poseidon a little bit, but that's it. You know, I don't know. I just, I wanted a little more. I didn't need much more. I need a little more. Just a little more? I needed more. I I didn't, I want to like SpongeBob for his gumption and his pureness. And I feel like he was just there. And so was Pat, and even Patrick. Like, he felt extra dumb in this movie, whereas normally he's always mm-hmm. dumb. But there's some genius behind that dumb on occasion. I oh. don't know if that showed up ever. A lot of the nitpicks you got are just um, is that's just kind of how the newer seasons go. Patrick has gotten dumber every felt season. Felt more one dimension, you know. It felt two dimensional. Yeah, but I wanted it to be three dimensional. Patrick is. They have taken. I like. They're pulling it back now because I think even they realized like Patrick's too dumb. Yeah. When you come up on him and he's just like sucking on a rock with a puddle of drool around him. Yeah. We've gone too far. Well, because there's this. What is he just eats like a whole thing of kitty litter? You know. Yeah. Which, what you have to do is you have to have him say something smart while he's yeah, sucking down the exactly. kitty litter. Yeah. Which I think he does say something smart, but not smart enough. Yeah. I do like the pep talk he gave to Spongebob. Yeah. Right? That was nice. Yeah. There, were, there were moments like that where I was like, oh, we're almost going somewhere. But then it was kind of like, now we're not. Just hop in the car. We're going to the place. Yeah. Um, are we, are so we we're here now. We're here. There yeah. is a dream sequence. Oh, so They're good, in a ghost town and a sage bush rolls up and it is Keanu Reeves. <laughs> And which was saved. a fun cameo. Oh, yeah. And, okay, I'm going to read you my new favorite uh, my new favorite fun fact. You know, the trivia facts we like to share? Yeah. I found a new one that I like very much, and I just... Uh, okay. <laughs> Stop. No. I can't not share it with you. Oh. So he's there. He's their sage guide. He's going to give them some yeah. guidance. He likes to say... What does he say? Yeah, I'm a sage, like a teacher, you know. I'm also Sage Bush. My name is Sage, so it works out pretty well. 
Yeah. And this is what this genius wrote in IMDb. And I'm a little upset because zero out of one people found this interesting. I'm just going to like this to bump that ratio up. Keanu yeah. Reeves plays Sage. And as he says, I'm made out of Sage and my name is Sage. So it works out pretty well. As the film progresses, he seems to give out some pretty sage advice as well. So that works out pretty well. <laughs> Love it's it. It's the best. What a hero. Best, new submission for best trivia fact on IMDb. We did it. We're here. I'm always yeah. down for a Keanu cameo. He's in Always Be My Maybe. Pops up in there. Love it. I love it when he just pops up. I love that he's down. And he'll, he'll go to just a fun movie, you know? It doesn't have to be like a great movie, just like, I'm here. Yeah. I'm here to lend my Keanu-ness, my Keanu-ness to you. Yeah. It doesn't stop with Keanu. It goes hard, because there there's a song, and in that song is a rap. And in that rap is Snoop Dogg. <laughs> Which, rapping. finally, am I right? It only took finally. us 20 years to get Snoop, Snoop Dogg? Dogg. I know people think he's a good rapper, but Be his rap now. was pretty good in this movie, even. Like, yeah. he can pop up in this movie. He can pop up in a Katy Perry song. He can pop up in a SpongeBob movie. Wherever he goes, he's going to do a pretty good job. Here's the thing Snoop Dogg <laughs> amazes me because he's like old school gangster rapper, right? Yeah. Like, around most, like, the old guys who got shot in drive by shootings. All those 90s gangster rappers. Yeah. But he is like one of the most wholesome human beings. Friends with Martha Stewart. He does his uh, Planet Earth segments. Yeah, he's he's the 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 you know non criminal one in his friendship with Martha Stewart. That is the best thing. He's got the cleaner criminal record. Yeah, he's and is here. less likely to throw racial slurs at a production assistant. Well, maybe not, but it's not really a slur if he says Snoop it. Dogg. Snoop Dogg. I know Snoop Dogg doesn't like mumble rappers. He yeah. thinks the new kids, they need to tone it back and they need to enunciate. I even do. like Bailey and I were listening to a Snoop Dogg song. This was like six months ago. And even yeah. she was like, I really like that I can like hear everything he's saying. I'm like, yeah, that's his thing. Yeah. He's into it. He like has a nice flow. He's not a fast rapper. He's not a slow rapper. He just gives it to you. gives you the nice lines and you know what he's saying. Yeah. He also... I do remember he went to last one of my favorite things that he appeared in. He went to the like EA event where they revealed Battlefield or something or Battlefront Two, and they had a big like tournament mm-hmm. with a bunch of YouTubers and other influencers of various kinds. Yeah, and it was like him and another famously. It's like him and I don't know another rapper who's like famous for always being always smoking weed like constantly having weed in his system Mm -hmm. and everybody else there was like everybody got high like the entire (laughs) event center was filled with smoke and everybody's all like eyes are bloodshot just a cloud of people getting contact high from (laughs) snoop and so you can see all these other like football players and like (laughs) actors going to other events and stuff and they're just sitting there like slouched super low on the couch like yeah, man, it's fun times. You know, it's <laughs> nice. And they were like passing their joint down. So it's like you could take a hit of Snoop Dogg's oh joint. Gosh. And it's like a lot of people are like, I, I, didn't, I wasn't brave enough. <laughs> I was too afraid. You got to watch out because those people who like smoke weed all the time, they're not smoking the same weed yeah. that everyone else is smoking. Like, what was it? I think I was watching one of David Chang shows on Netflix. But he, ugly, delicious, it might be ugly, delicious, but he's, he's going around, like, it's like a travel version of that. So he goes to Vancouver with Seth Rogen, and he's like, you know, he takes like a big hit of Seth's thing, and he's like, yeah, you might want to tone back, you don't smoke, I smoke all the time, like, this is different, you know, anyway, it's, just, yeah, you get, you gotta be careful, because yeah. nowadays, you know, back in the day, when there was one kind of really crappy marijuana that everyone smoked, that didn't work, now there's like legal weed everywhere and people are like here's like cure you know highly curated fine super potent you know you got all kinds of stuff going around yeah so anyway if snoop dog ever offers you a hit just watch out watch out 
But no, he'll Same be with there Seth for Rogen, you. I guess. <laughs> yeah, Seth Rogen will not be there for you. But Snoop, he'll make sure you're okay. Yeah, he will. He's a wholesome boy. This sequence does not end with a Snoop Dogg cameo. <laughs> no, it does not. Because there's a Danny Trejo. Okay. Yeah. He's like El Diablo. He's the big boss man at the end. Danny okay. Trejo, too, oh. who's also another one of those dudes. Danny Trejo will do like student films. Like people will be like, hey, do you want to do this project? We can't pay anything. He's like, all right. He yeah. goes by for an afternoon, does the like, cool dude. Yeah. Also, I feel like we should mention just for anybody who hasn't seen the film, you know, we're listening to this, wanting the full experience. I feel like it's important to note that the rap was a, a song of dance number from the zombie uh, pirate cowboys. Yeah, zombie pirate cowboys. That SpongeBob and Patrick have been tasked with freeing their souls from El Diablo. <laughs> I did like that they're going through and they're like, we're going to free the people. You know, Danny Trail's like, we're not doing that, you know, whatever. And they're like, but we're tasked, you know, we've got your quest. What is- oh, does he like flash him the coin? Yeah. Or whatever. He's like, what? Is this from the Bush guy? <laughs> like, <what are> you- <laughs> He's not even re- you know, whatever it was. I did appreciate that they were just like, what are you, that guy's not even like a thing, <laughs> you know? I don't know. I did yeah. like that. Yeah. But then, and then they, they are admiring the curtains. <laughs> yeah. And burn him. To Burn. death with the sunlight. Yeah. Oh yeah. I yeah. <laughs> I did like that. Just like the bush guy. Like what even? Yeah. Uh, that was good. Yeah. Oh, okay. Here's the thing about that dream sequence. Yeah. It was just a dream sequence. Yeah. Because they have the coin though. <laughs> yeah. Later on they have the coin. Yeah. It's a dream. So what's that about? It's a dream. It's fine. All right. If you say so. I was. It might as well have been part of the mo- Right. It might as well have just been part of it. Well, the thing is, it was also, you know, it, you know, because then Sage goes on and he's there later too. He's not just in the dream. Yeah. That's a real coin. Yeah. He's real. The coin's real, but the dream is a dream. It's a shared dream. And that's how they know it's a dream because they were like, they were talking smart. <laughs> oh yeah. I like that. SpongeBob and Patrick were talking about how, you know, the philosophical implications of a shared dream. And he's like, <gasps> Patrick, we're talking smart. This is a dream. <laughs> yeah. They do the dream. They get through. They make it to the lost city of Atlantic City. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like, what? What'd you, what'd you say? Disneyland plus Las Vegas plus Atlantic City? Is that I mean, it was Atlantic City, but, you know, less dirty than, I'm, <laughs> sure. than I've heard Atlantic City is. And, I mean, if you're from Atlantic City, are you going to deny it? Are you going to deny that the city... At least has the reputation of being dirty. Mm-hmm. No. Nobody's going to deny it. You can't, because it's the truth. You can't handle the truth. Mm-hmm. They, uh, Sage is like, hey, don't get distracted by all the buzzing lights and stuff. You got a mission. They proceed to get incredibly distracted <laughs> and hung over on, yeah. you know, the high of the atlantic city you know all it has to offer yeah because they 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 place a bet they win big and then they have an entourage and i did like they won and like they were your entourage <laughs> Bunch of people showed show up, up. Uh, then they're surfing later in the wave pool and they're like i lost all my money me too and the entourage just oh just <laughs> I, mean, I did like the entourage yeah. but then you know when did they get captured how did they get captured um is it I'm trying. Did they just get captured right when they come in? Because ask for an audience with them, or no? Did they go? Did they replace the blue fin group? Yeah. And then they do their little speech, and then they get captured. Is that yeah. right? Am I yeah. tracking? Yeah. Because they 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 murder the blue fin group <laughs> by catapulting them down an elevator, elevator shaft. shaft. Yeah, classic. I and mean, and they explode as you do. It's called an Atlantic City funeral. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, I know they get on the, they get on stage, they do their, their, their entertainment, right? <laughs> yeah. And then try to steal Gary. Yeah. And then get caught. The dude, they're in jail. I really, I did crack up when, um, they're in jail and just playing the sad music or, you know, it's got the ominous music and it's just Patrick playing a little MIDI keyboard. Yeah. I did. I, I really enjoyed that. I got a big kick out of it. He's playing the, you know what else blew my mind? You know, there's only three film composers. Yeah. There's John yeah. Williams. There's Ludwig van Gornsen. He's the new one. Hans Zimmer. 
Yeah. Which one would you guess did this movie? Hans Zimmer. That's right. It was Hans Zimmer. Yeah. Did the score for this movie, which just amazes. It amazes me. It amazes me to no end that he could be, you know, Chris Nolan's like, I need a, a, a score for like a two and a half hour epic movie about space and time and family. And then also they're like, we have a cartoon you do for. And he says, yes. How does yeah. that work? Well, SpongeBob's popular. Gotta do it. There you go. SpongeBob's more popular than space. That tracks. Yeah. How many people are up in space? Not a lot. Probably none. How many people are in SpongeBob? Mo- Keanu Reeves. Tran- Danny Trejo. Snoop Dogg. Matthew David Hasselhoff. Barry. Oh. oh, David Hasselhoff. There you go. Uh, Antonio Banderas. He's in the second one. He is. Second movie, I've heard from the IMDb page. Yes, that's true. Um, Okay, so they get captured. They're stuck. I also like that they have their little fight. (laughs) And so Patrick opens, he just like opens the prison cell and and then goes to the one next door. (laughs) Like, oh, yeah. It's like, I'm leaving. I thought thought that said they were going to leave, and that's not even how. No. They still stay trapped. So then Sandy. And Mr. Krabs and Squidward and Plankton band together and ride the new and improved paddy wagon to go save him. That's what I, I that's where the plot just not track me. I was like, well, there. At least in the first movie, SpongeBob and Patrick use the power of their friendship and whatever, and they're able to get through. You know, yeah. their pickle. And this one is like, we're here, save us, please, and they do get saved. You know. Yeah, but you know, I mean. They done the thing. They done the power of the friendship. They done the whole crew going and saving. Now it's time to do the. They went. And they failed. Now it's time for the backup to come and save you. Yeah. The it's... point is, the entire time King Poseidon is using Gary as a face cream. Yeah. And Gary is the only snail left with a snail trail. Yeah. That's pretty shocking. What has the global warming come to? Exactly. All these snails no longer have trails. Mm-hmm. Something to think about. Conservation, reduce, reuse, replenish, revamp, reemphasize, replicate, recycle. Yeah. The 12 R's. We all know them. <laughs> yeah. We all love them. So, uh, yeah. So Sandy and the other one and the plankton and whoever, they come, they come. They ride in. They're the cavalry to save the day. There's a trial, and they're like, no, we're crashing the trial. You need a defense. We're putting on a show. We're giving a defense. But then the defense is just flashbacks, and it's all how SpongeBob helped them when they first met him. This is the retconning of the camp stories. I don't know. I don't know. Here's the thing, though. that The, the way the camp works in those flashbacks is different from how it works in the TV show, the Camp Coral TV show. How does it work? So, like, Squidward's a counselor. So he's much older than all of them. He's not the same age. I did see that in the trivia. They're like, Squidward, uh, you know, according to people have estimated, he was born between, like, the 60s and 70s or whatever. All right, so Squidward's the counselor. Yeah. Mr. So Squidward Krabs? goes from a camp counselor to a fast food cashier. Yeah. This poor man. Yeah. I did like that his idol was Kelpie G. Yeah. It was just Kenny G. But Have you not... Kelpie G, recurring character in the I show. don't recall. I think I may have just been too young. And Is it in the early seasons? Um, I know he likes... Not like the There's like clarinet ones. recordings he listens to. Yeah. So if it's reference, I'm not, I'm not in on it. But I think now I would get it because I know Kenny G. Yeah. I think the first time... Were your parents into Kenny G? No. Nah. My parents... My parents are cool than that. Super into Kenny G. I helped a guy on IT support once because he's the IT support for the university. He's one of the, like the faculty. Yeah. He called in. I was like, "Wow, what is that music?" He's like, "It's Kenny G, man." I was like, "Oh, okay." Yeah. Fun fact for everybody uh, whose parents were born in the past: <laughs> Kenny G <laughs> is what they bone down to. Yeah, bone down music. It's what it is. So you think your parents are just nerds? Nope. You got a you got a bone down playlist. You got a bone down artist. Is it Kenny G? Is it something else? Something more modern? I mean, if I'm throwing something on, <laughs> you got. I mean, Boys to Men is my go-to in oh, my head sex music. That's good. That's good. 
my Spotify wrapped last year, I was in the top 0.5 percentile of Al Green listeners. So nice. Now you know. All right. Now you know. All right. Anyway, so it was fine. It was fine. It just it wasn't climactic for me. You know, it's just a bunch of flap flashbacks. You're like, well, that's not. It's not the same as a plot happening. You know. Yeah. But they're doing a song and but dance number. Oh yeah, I don't remember. Yeah, that happened right for like a second. But do you need? More oh, that's than that? that was their distraction. That was their diversion. Was the yeah. song and dance together. And the away. king is so into it. I love how they have. This is something that's also been in the in previous episodes. There's the trident has a toggle to turn it on and off. Oh yeah, it's not like it's like it's not magical. It's not it's like just super magical. Like it's just a tech like, thing. Yeah. And turn, well, it's like it is magic, but you got to turn it on. Oh yeah, you know. Of course. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I uh, I will say, as much as I didn't love like the device of the flashbacks, it did have another one of my favorite moments where like it's Squidward. He's doing the talent show. He's playing his clarinet. He's like, I'm gonna nail this. <laughs> one of the kids in the audience <laughs> throws up <laughs> while he's playing. <laughs> so bad. It, I. Uh, maybe. Uh, oh, can I share? Simple, it's the simple things in life. I want to share with you something from, I believe it's the first episode of Camp Coral. Okay. So, Mr. Krabs, who's the camp director in Camp, in camp Coral, yeah. has told Squidward to play Reverie every morning. Okay. Get everybody up. So, he doesn't get up, but SpongeBob gets up, obviously, like that, like clockwork. Yeah. Gets a, gets a, a dolly. Wheels Squidward up to where he's supposed to play it, puts the clarinet in his mouth, but he grabs a pan on the way from mm-hmm. the kitchen. And then he like does something, like smacks him or does something to wake Squidward up, and Squidward immediately goes into playing the clarinet. Mm-hmm. And then SpongeBob uses the pan to block all the rocks that everybody's throwing at him to try <laughs> to stop him. Ah, oh, so good. Oh. Yeah, they... Yeah. Uh, I did. I love that bit. They do their song and dance. They make their escape. My other favorite bit. <laughs> this is Patrick. They're all running away, and Patrick sees the free food. You know. Oh yeah. The volume of chicken he fits. I was just like, I loved it. <laughs> the volume. I mean, he probably he had at least like twenty or thirty drumsticks in his mouth. Because he was like yelling too, like no. Oh! <laughs> yeah, he's like just, shoveling them into his mouth and into the chase. Oh, it's so good. Oh man. And then they all hide in the suit of armor and have a whole fight with that. Well, yeah, that, I think that was probably Bailey. I don't know. I, Bailey will enjoy a movie. She doesn't always laugh a lot. I think the thing she laughed the hardest at was uh, Plankton being stuck in Patrick's butt cheeks. <laughs> she loved it. Yeah. Got the audible laugh. Yeah. And that's at the end. You know, That's the end of the movie. That's when your attention's dwindling. It was late at night when we watched this. We had a long day. And uh, it, it got her. It got her. I do appreciate this one. Sometimes their animations are just really good, really funny. You know, some of their yeah. drawings. The drawings. Yeah. I see you look concerned. So, oh. No, it's okay. They make their escape, but then they don't because they get caught. Yeah. And then, uh, so the final thing, SpongeBob's like, it doesn't matter if you're ugly or whatever and blah, blah, blah. And this is where it took a turn for me. All right. So King... Poseidon is like, so it doesn't matter that I wear my, you know, my wig and he throws off and he's bald or my, my clip and he pulls off his neck clip and his face like sags down and he's like, or my, you know, he pulls off like his chest thingy and he's like, yeah, his girdle. He just it went so far. <laughs> I, just, I wasn't ready for it. I was like, <laughs> I can't, this scene is too long. I can't keep watching it. He just kept it's like, pulling stuff off. They'll do like those gross out, super detailed, like weird close ups, you know, yeah. for like two seconds. <laughs> and this was like a two minute scene where I was like, oh no, I can't keep watching him. Oh, it keeps going. Yeah. It's so oh. good though. He took his teeth out. <laughs> oh man. But he was happy. So that's cool. Yeah. Cause he finally had a friend. It was fun. They got to free the snails. That was cute. At the end, snails yeah. got freed and got to live with SpongeBob. Bailey liked that too. She likes cat things. Yeah. So there you go. She the did snails. not like Patrick eating kitty litter. She could not stomach that one. Yeah. <laughs> but it's all the little, little little snails going around. They had a little snail sanctuary at the end. That was fun. That was cute. That was That's nice. what it's all about. Saving the snails. It's all about it. That, I mean, those are my notes. That's that's the movie. What what did we what were we missing? 
so much. It's a brand new movie, so there's only so much. It's brand new. Do you sign up it. for Paramount Plus? Or do you just do the trial? Here's the thing. Maybe I'm still signed up. I don't know. I had it because I watched the Super Bowl on CBS. Yeah. And uh, maybe I didn't cancel it properly because it just let me. I didn't download the new app. It just switched from CBS All Access to Paramount Plus, and I just hit press play and let me watch it. So I don't even know. I yep. probably got charged $7. I don't know. But I watched it. That's fun. And it was fun, and you enjoyed it. And you looked at everything else that's on there. So let us let me ask you this. I didn't look at anything. <laughs> oh. Well, that takes the wind out of what I was going to ask, because I was going to ask you what you thought about Paramount+. Plus. You know what? Right now, Cody, pull it up. Whip it out. Do you want it on my phone, or do you want me to whip it out? Whip on it on the, the TV, on Cody. On the TV, on the big screen? Because I think we both agree this is the best movie ever made, so we can move on to the streaming service. All right. That it heralds. Let's see what they've got to offer. See, now my app is saying sign in, sign up or sign in. So Here's I don't thing. know what happened. If right? we need to, I can give. I was going to offer up my credentials to you. All right. Paramount? If, if needed. Is it Paramount Plus or Paramount? T- you know? Or is it Paramount Network Plus? Yeah. Or what? What? Scott Ackerman was his bet. It's like Disney. Disney. Does he get it? <laughs> <laughs> Which is is a trending show. Ooh, it's, uh, Camp Coral's trending. <gasps> All right. Do you want to see what's trending? You want to go somewhere else? I mean, I want to know. I just want you to look at it because I've looked I'm, at everything. I'm perusing this. We got, ooh, iCarly. Loved iCarly. NCIS. That's mm-hmm. all right. Paw Patrol. Keep hearing about it. I got nep- nephews, nephews in laws, whatever, into it. Yeah. Ink Master. Nope. Hard nope. You uh, love it. Oh, though. the real the real world's getting a reboot with the original. Clarice actually looks interesting. I was gonna say you're gonna go past Clarice and not say no. Y five O Star Trek Discovery is supposed to be good. Star Trek, Star, but you know Star Trek's been pretty consistent. I don't think any Star Trek fans are like I hate this series. Like that one's fine. Star Trek Discovery. Uh, very did you ever good. watch Next? No. Oh, so bad. Trash TV at its finest. Uh, yeah. Oh, Blue Bloods. I mean, look. If you got Tom Selleck, you got a mustache, you got a winning formula. That's all you need. Exactly. Okay? Young Sheldon. I get so many ads for Young Sheldon. drives me crazy. I'm not a Big Bang boy. I don't like the Big Bang Theory. I get Young Sheldon's all up in. I don't know why it's in my grill. I don't know why it's in my radar, my news feed. It's there. Because everybody loves it. I mean, just look at how many uh, ads for it you get. Because you love it so much. Ugh. NCIS New Norleans. 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 Oh, The Godfather. Oh, All three you Godfathers. Seen it? I have not. Uh, pretty good. Some people say one of the best movies ever made. I would say it's pretty darn good. Yeah. Pretty long. I watched it, but it, my friend had it. I think he bootlegged it or something because none yeah. of the sub... There's a part where they go to Italy in Sicily. None of those subtitles happened, so it was a lot of reading facial cues trying to figure it out. But what I did learn from watching The Godfather with zero subtitles, I learned one word, which is machina, which is what they call a car. Kind of like in Russia, they call just like the car. They're, they also call referred to it as whatever their word for machine is. Same in Italy. It's a machina, just nice. a machine. So that's fun. Wow, Mission Impossible. Now, here's the thing. I need you to go back one tick here. Go two ticks now. What? Indiana Jones and the Rares of Lost Ark? Okay, it's a George Lucas, Steven Spielberg collab. Yeah. There's a man with a hat and a whip. Yeah. It belongs in a museum. Yeah. That's all you need to know. <laughs> you say, why is it on here? I don't know. Who, who I mean, you know. People like, are snatching up content left and right. Oh, Tommy Boy, come on. Yeah. Classic. My, my question about the Indiana Jones is, is are they not like uh, somehow owned by Disney? I thought they were Disney owned. Oh, because of the George Lucas scenario? I know the property know, is owned by Lucas Films. I know there are Indiana Jones ride in Disneyland, but I think they just did a lot of collabing with Lucas Film because they do. They had Star Wars rides before Disney owned Star Wars. They had Indiana Jones rides. I don't know. But they own Lucas Film, which owns the yeah, Indiana Jones property. Yeah, but you Jones and I property. both discussed how Disney do not have all their movies on their streaming service. Yeah. Maybe they're selling licenses out still. Oh, From Dust Till Dawn, one of the few movies, feature films with Tarantino as an actor. Yeah. Come on. I haven't seen it. Evolution, that movie. Uh, here's the thing. Evolution is a movie. Spoiler alert. It is a it is a 101 minute long film that is actually a commercial for Head and Shoulders. So if you haven't seen it, I saw it when it came out. It's yeah. uh, 
spoilers for the movie Evolution, they defeat the aliens things with head and shoulders because it's got the chemical. Whatever chemical is bad for them. Yeah. I don't know. I they, don't know. They got Aeon Flux and the old cartoon. Oh, well, there's like, was that like an anime for that? Is that what yeah, you're talking about? Yeah, a very weirdly animated anime. Oh my god. They have a whole just Star Trek section. They got Picard, Look, they got Discovery, they got Lower Decks, which is actually not bad. I love Lower Decks. Uh, so yeah, good. pretty good. Picard, apparently, amazing. I've watched a lot of Discovery. I love it. Shout out to that show. I was going through uh, all these with my wife, and I'm, I, I formulated an opinion that may possibly be unpopular, but here it is, Cody. Star Trek is consistently better than Star Wars, but I like Star yeah. Wars better. Yeah, that's true. Although a lot of people really are digging on Star Wars TV, like Rebels, Clone Wars, Mandalorian. Yeah. So is that, the, you know, because Star Wars has never been a TV thing until recently. Yeah. So is that the new? Is that the four? Is that the new four A? That may be it because the star the Star, star Trek, Trek movies always, yeah. awful. Oh really? I've, I've heard Trash. some people like them. Some people do, but like I think it was the second or third. You're star talking Trek about movie. the older Star Trek movies? Yeah, like uh, Search for Spock and uh, the Voyage Home and yeah, uh, yeah those yeah. ones. Famously, some of the worst movies ever made. Wow, I did not know this. Very bad. Um, Look, they yeah. got sports. We yeah, all know sports. They got uh, news. They have a bunch of originals of the Twilight Zone. I am interested in the new Twilight Zone. I haven't heard anything about it. I've heard it's okay, hmm. which is disappointing to me personally. I loved Twilight Zone when I was a kid. Yeah, you did. And we all did. Oh. You got two things you got SpongeBob and you got Twilight Zone. Here's my question to you, Cody, because yeah. I, you know, I got this question news. in a trivia game. Oh. Ugh. There's a news section. I'm not into that. So I got this question in a trivia Who's game earlier. streaming news? Well, it's live news shows. All right. Anyway, which, <laughs> if I were to ask you which one of the Golden Girls is promiscuous, what would you say? Ethel. Betty White. It's yeah. Blanche. Blanche. <laughs> Everybody yeah. knows it's Blanche. Everyone knows this. I knew it. I don't so, know if the Golden Girls is on here. It's what, just, what, what? It just, you know, I needed to ask you, and this was the perfect time. But see, oh, they got all the Nickelodeon shows: Drake and Josh, Fairly Odd Parents, SpongeBob, Henry Danger. Oh. Uh, remember Ned's Declassified School Survival yeah, Guide? Yeah, dude. What a great show! So good. Cat Dog. What a weird show. So good though. Yeah. Are you afraid of the dark? Oh, oh. terrified. I can't do it. The scariest. It's got scary. The- you know, there were a lot of '90s shows with very scary theme songs and immediately yeah. you're like, I was just trying to watch SpongeBob. You know, you got to try to flip away. Before it yeah. scares you, but it already scared you. You start to have that panic attack yeah. as it begins. Yeah. Rugrats, Jimmy Neutron, Rocket Power. Oh, Rocket You're Power. You're not going to shout out House of Anubis? <laughs> Stop. Kid and a Cow. Yeah. Let's not talk about Big. <gasps> How dare you? Well, was it good? Big Time Rush. Here's the thing. Let me give you the picture of Big Time Rush. Oh, I think I know. The... Do, you want, do you want me to, do you want to hear what I think it is? Sure. It's a band... And a TV show. A t- band made for a TV show. Yeah. Nickelodeon TV show band. Yeah. Like, like this, Camp Rock. This is the, re- the reality of it, though. This is what no one's out here saying. They're like One Direction, but better. No. Yeah. Better than one, than one D? The One D. Wow. They even got the Nick Jr. show, Blue's Clues. I learned <gasps> a lot of fascinating information about Blue's Clues and how they made it. So that little kids could, it works the cognitively with the way young minds learn. And it's more educational than Sesame Street, which is why I'm a smart boy. Because I watch Blue's Clues, yeah, not yeah, Sesame yeah. Street. Yeah. Sesame Street may be more fun for adults, but Blue's Clues is psychologically engineered for three to six year olds. All right? Yeah, it is. You know, but what about Peppa Pig? How much psychological engineering do you think goes into Peppa <laughs> All I know is that canonically Peppa Pig is like seven feet tall or something. Yeah. <laughs> and ever, it's, everyone's terrified of it. So, so that's how, all I know. how big is Daddy Pig? Uh, 12 feet, roughly. You, I mean, you're looking at Peppa. You're saying Peppa's seven. <laughs> okay, so seven Dad's feet. 14. Like 35 feet Stop. tall or something, right? <laughs> he, he's freakishly tall. He's like Godzilla height. Oh, my gosh. I just, okay. When Drew, Drew Curry hosts Price, the, Price is Right, he's yeah. skinny now and tan. And... 
I don't need either of those things from my. Drew I thought Carey. you were about to say like I was really sad when Drew Carey died and they replaced him with another oh, guy. That is a good segue. R.I.P. Stephen Hellenberg. You know. Yeah. Good on you. You made a precious show of our childhood. You inspired many young minds, apparently, about oceanography. That was his original intent. As professor, prof, uh, professor. Yeah, is that he's a marine biologist, a decorated marine biologist. Yeah, I did hear somewhere, like a lot of great creators came out. Like the marvelous misadventures of Flapjack was like a SpongeBob alum. Um, yeah. Regular show, I think SpongeBob alums created that. Like, and that's the thing. I think that's why SpongeBob kind of had like a dip. And some recovery, you know, just because, like, they lost a lot of good animators after the first few seasons because they're like, yeah, well, we went and did our own shows, you know. Yeah, which you can, I, I mean, if you were, like, to sit down and watch every episode, which I've done several times, mm-hmm. like, just boom, blast through them all. Yeah. You can, you really get a feel for, like, the original team of writers. Like, if you see their name on a, like, they wrote it yeah. episode, you're like, this is going to be a good one. And then there's, like, some newer guys that pop up and you're like, get this guy out of here. Yeah. The one that I think consistently is the best. First off, shout out to Zeus. I don't know your last name, but there's a guy named Zeus who's on the writing and animation team Mm -hmm. for SpongeBob. Mm -hmm. He wrote everybody, like anytime somebody's like one of my favorite episodes, he was one of the storyboard artists or the writers or something. Interesting. He's like involved in almost all of the best episodes. Plus, his name is Zeus. I hear you. I want to know who this... I want to know more about him. Um, but Paul Tibbet and Mr. Lawrence... The Mr. Lawrence voice is Plankton. Yeah. They're both guys who wrote, uh, I would say, the bulk of the earlier episodes that people like, and then got more back... Like, started writing more episodes as it got better. Yeah. According, yeah. according to the SpongeBob wiki on fandom, Zeus Service... Yeah. That's his name. And uh, he wrote... So what did he say? Oh, gosh. Uh, there's a banner on this website that makes it impossible to read. This is my nightmare. Yeah, it's the worst. It's okay. a time. Uh, he was a crew member from season two to nine. Worked with Casey Alexander. They worked as writers on more than 100 episodes since season five. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. I would like to know uh, the episodes he did. So, I guess I won't. Personal top 16 oh, worst episodes. All right, well, I'm not, we're not, I'm done with this one. So, thank you, Stephen Hellenberg. What are you, where are you at? Are you going to recommend this movie? Yeah, I think this movie is, I think the second movie is the best if you're a SpongeBob fan. I think this one would be easier for somebody who's not into SpongeBob to watch. You know what I mean? You, I'm, I'm curious about this second movie, but. I don't know. I just fond memories of the first one. And this it was okay for me. I don't know if I I don't know if I if this quite gets my recommendation. <gasps> for as high as the highs were, I think the lows were too low for me. It's so you're saying it's not worth signing up for and spending a hundred dollars for a year subscription to Paramount Plus. Unless you're gonna stream a whole lot of news. What if you plan on streaming the Halo T V show? Oh no way. Is that coming out? On Paramount. Yeah, it's being moved from Showtime to that's they're wanting it to be their equivalent to like The Mandalorian or uh, Whoa. whatever the big show on Netflix is. I mean, if you're a fan of The Bold and the Beautiful, The Young and the Restless, or uh, Price a show is called right. The Talk, which has to be a oh. worse version of The View. Yeah. It just has to be. It is. And um, maybe... Maybe. It seems, I don't know. That's the problem with CBS. I, I watched it for sports, and most people, I think, it's a Star Trek machine. Yeah. If you love Star Trek, it's Which, great. If you're not into the Star Trek, then it's like, there's not a lot. There. Scrolling I mean, through I, it, there's more than it looks like here, because I think there's lots of good movies that are buried down there. Cause people I mean, they have The Godfather there. and Indiana Jones and stuff. But I will say that there is, I think, to me, it looks how um, you're in just the popular section right now. Uh, like HBO Max did when it first launched, or Disney Plus mm-hmm. did when it first launched, where you're like, right. oh, there's like nothing here. 
Yeah, and they, then as yeah. contracts that they have with other streaming services expire, mm-hmm. they'll re- regain. Because like some of the shows, they have like uh, like I think CSI, which is a big show for CBS. They have the set first second season and then the fourteenth season. Oh, because right now I think it's Hulu. Right, has the contract to have all the seasons on. I don't know what Hulu's going to do. All their shows getting snapped. I mean, just their A's of this. There's like several rows. Amelie's on here. There's a lot of documentaries. I might watch Amazing Pigs. There's also, I will say this. They So Comedy Central is included in their brands. Oh, yeah. They have a lot of comedies. Anthony Jeselnik. Ooh, I should watch that. I like Anthony Jeselnik. Yeah. Mark Norman, Sam Morrill. So I think the... Netflix has got to kind of step up and start producing more of their specials again because that's a big thing with Netflix is the comedy specials. Right. It was, it was like the, I mean, like five years. It was like the standard, you know. That's where you got a comedy special. It used to be HBO. Now it's Netflix. I think Comedy Central is getting back in the game. Yeah. So they got all the like all your favorite comedy special. They got Big Time Movie. Wow. All right. The Smithsonian, which has actually it's kind of like National Geographic, got lots of really good documentaries and stuff so i don't know if i i would recommend the trial i don't know if i'd recommend signing up for it now but but they got charlie brown they got bo burnham all right all right they got several carlos mencia comedy specials uh those are still out they canceled that boy they just cancel all you cancel all his new stuff he's fine we didn't know about it back then (laughs) all right Oh, Chinatown. That's a, cl- that's, that's a classic. I haven't seen it. It's supposed to be uh, a movie. All right. SpongeBob. Yeah. The SpongeBob movie, Sponge on the Run, which is also the name of the video game for the previous movie. It's fine. It's, the, it's, okay. it's okay. Reduce. Reuse. We reuse titles. All right. We reuse yeah. lines, Squidward lines. We, it's a responsible thing to do. Yeah. I like it. You don't like it. Yeah. You hate it. It's there were some great mo- there were some great moments. <laughs> yeah. There were. It will make you chuckle. It might not be worth a rewatch for most people. Yeah, yeah. That's I would I would agree with that. But if you got like a family movie night or something, it's a good one to throw on. Sure. Well thank you for listening. We're on the internet. Opinion havers for rating or sharing. We're on Twitter and Facebook. At opinion havers. Yeah. getting some traction getting some engagement from our two fans thank you and um got some fun stuff coming down the pipe <gasps> yeah some fun surprises oh some fun collaborations oh yeah it's coming out there collaborations with someone who's probably much more popular than us on the internet oh there's a good chance but you can't know that because i don't go on the internet i'm this, still trying to this still entity applying. has at least two more followers than us that's probably true as well so it could real really be a chance to grow our brand yeah <laughs> real shake up for the industry you know <laughs> well thank you for listening and until next time watch movies and have opinions they got the roasts on here are they fun are those even fun they have a bunch oh you can watch the donald trump one where i don't think he oh. knows he's at his roast oh no <laughs> yeah yikes when did that come out uh, what year would it even long time. the roast I don't understand because for a while I thought it was for comedians but it's all cele- these are all just celebrities James yeah. Franco is like a kind of comedian yeah I don't know I don't know you know roast hundred dollars at opinion havers <laughs> on Twitter <laughs>